What are you doing? Filming. Yeah, right. I am. So what are we doing? Putting the airflow. Uh, welcome to Tech Adventures. Putting today. Starting with the thermostat because uh, this is the 195. And we're working on the GMC truck. Yes. What it really amounts to is uh, I went onto somebody's channel and they said they said that uh, when your car is running really bad, sometimes it don't always have uh, the code for it. So the mass airflow sensor, I know on our uh, sport track that it it really sounded like something something was bad, and uh, it might have had a code. But switched it out. The thing ran beautiful. So we went to advance and uh, picked up picked up an air for, on this truck. It's this right here. It's in line with the uh, the intake. Right, sits right in front of the plenum. And uh, if that don't do it, this this right here. This is the throttle position TPS that that's an aftermarket that's a cheapy just like um, I called the Chevy dealer I could have got that mass airflow sensor for, uh, made by Delphi could have got it for $299 and uh, so I'm cheaping out on it because there's not too many things that are cheap for this truck but if it works, I ain't worried about it. So. And if it don't work, you're going to get a lot more content because there's going to be some changes made. Right now, I'm just trying to get this old gasket off. Put some gasket maker on, back on it. We'll come back to you. Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah, we we found a snake skin in the truck this morning when we opened the hood. This is what it looks like. And that's how long it is. We had to tie him up so he wouldn't get into the uh, coolant. But this is Pup. Say, hey, everybody. He likes getting into stuff. That's Maggie right there. And Star, she likes to jump the fence, so we got to keep her tied up until we go in. using the ultra black and I'm just gonna it's oil resistant these surfaces are flat so it wasn't leaking
clean these up. All rusted together. I think the last the last time we were broke down in this thing was the time that we had to put a water pump in it so my water pump didn't get painted when it put in. Ain't gonna get painted this week either. So how that went at that time, we were, we were close to a church parking lot and uh, whipped in, discovered why the thing, it, the, the water was just running out of the, the weep hole. So we had to call, had to call around to see who had it and uh, had somebody take us up to the parts store. If you're watching and you remember that, you know who you are. Thanks for helping us that day. But what's going on with it right now? It was it was the truck was backfiring and all this stuff. And we actually we went all the way to. Uh, I think we were running that time. At that time, we were we were running to get uh, a copy of. We had to go up to the records department up in uh, Durham. And even though this thing was acting up, we just kept kept driving it. It seemed to it seemed to be doing okay, and uh, after that day, there's been like a mystery of this thing. I I never took it to the to the dealer or anybody, and I've just been trying different things since then. We changed the distributor, changed the plugs, changed the, the uh, didn't change the timing gear. I thought about it. You seen in the video it, it starts right up, but but now it's it feels like no matter what you do you got no throttle. So that's gotta be either position sensor or it it don't know that, that you that it needs air or and fuel. If a snake comes popping out at me, you're gonna see me scream. <laughs> I think it's a uh, chicken snake. It's it's a brown snake. I don't care if it's a snake. He went right by our feet one day. That's why we already seen it. And that's the second skin I've seen. I, I love it because um, I don't need I don't need field mice chewing on all my wiring out here. You talk about something. You talk about a mess. You got no. Uh, no wiring in your car that's gonna cause a fire or something else. That's, I'd rather have the snake eating them as they see fit, as they catch them. All right, well, I just gotta clean these little wires up here. That's for the thermostat. There's both of, both of these sides have uh, grounding tabs and they look okay. I guess I'll just put them on the way it does.
this engine needs to come out. I just don't have the I don't have the money to put a to put it in a machine shop like it should be done. I only did that one other time. Well, twice. One time we bought a Chuck's we bought a Chuck's remanufactured engine, but it was really, it should have been a Jasper. Jasper's didn't have the, it was a 260 old V8. Jasper didn't have the engine, so they they found us one that was remanned for, through uh, Chuck's engines. And they, they man, at the, uh, Warranty was for 20,000 miles. We put 18,000 miles on that engine and it started running bad and we, we traded it. I should have kept that car. It, it, that car was uh, the same body style as the 79 El Camino, but it was a wagon, Olds wagon. It was an 82. And it's just cool. It's just cool to have a wagon, especially if you you got a got like a little V8 in there. It's just we were able to tow with it. Had a lot of room. I think the dealership only gave us thousand two hundred dollars for the trade in and I'm like. I had that much into just the motor. I should have never tra let them have it. For... That's why you see cars in my yard because I, I'm tired of giving them away. car in the yard is the Crown Vic. Yeah, so if you're one of them places that got one of my cars in the past, you did me a favor because you're saving me a lot of money. I'm tired of losing money on, on the deal. You're going to start losing money on the deal, not me. I don't know why that won't even go on there. Oh, I lost it. Went all the way down, I think, that time. that's on there it's just like I said this thing had my mice running around I need to power wash it but I'm afraid I'm afraid to really next we're gonna disconnect this this is the uh, these little spring clips right here they're probably so old be careful with that and I just have two two screws and we'll since the phone's getting hot we'll come back to you that's it's self-explanatory self-explanatory it's got a uh, directional it'll say which way is in and out come back. and is that the mass airflow yeah it'll have an arrow I'll show you when it comes out Okay. But it's just it's just two screws. Nobody needs help with that. This is the old mast airflow sensor and this is the new one. It's already been out, so it came out. It came apart real easy. Yours probably 
you have to take take this off so you don't damage the rip, the boot. And like I was saying, it's just match it up. This one, it tells you on here the direction. See the waffling? I made sure it was the backside towards the the plenum. This is the plenum. It's open and where it comes in, it reads this across it. And I tried cleaning it. I, I've got the cleaner. It's just original. I think it quit uh, working. We think it quit. I don't know. If this don't work, this between this, the TPS, the throttle position, TPS, it's it's about it's a little probe. That's aftermarket. Because I can't find nothing from the dealer for this. And if I do, it's, it's uh, you know, it's almost pointless. Most of the stuff is just not able to get it through the dealer. It'd be like trying to find a classic, you know, Chevrolet parts for the muscle cars. It's just, it's all aftermarket. But, uh, if this don't work um, the next step is going to be ripping all this off and putting a, uh, a dual plane intake with the carburetor and a fuel I'm going to put a fuel regulator gauge so I can and it's going to have a dial set it down lower than 6 psi so that it don't flood the go past so that the factory uh, fuel pressure won't overcome the carburetor and start pumping gas and cause a fire. But uh, this will probably work. So all, we, all I gotta do, we'll come back, just hook the battery up. The truck sits here a lot, so I don't keep the battery in it. Like I think the truck's been sitting here for over six years.
connect by cable, not, not by wire. So, anyways, it didn't work. Hopefully, we'll get some more uh, content. That's all we're going to do today. You want to show backing up a little bit? No. Nah, it's alright. I really don't think it's going to help, but I'll try it. I'll do it real quick. After checking it out, I mean, I think my coolant my coolant temperature is uh, is bad. It never shows anything in the truck, but I know both the hoses are hot, so the water's circulating. Still got no uh, smooth acceleration, so I thought maybe that was this, and I'd never changed that. So and. From what it says on YouTube, uh, you won't always get a code. Like I said, it's uh, it's kind of hit and miss on a TPS or not a TPS, mass airflow. But so, anyways, um, process of elimination. You know, I mean, I think it's it could be it it could have a broken. Uh, uh, or a worn cam lobe it might might have a might not might have a couple of uh, valves in the head or not that are not moving and uh, the only thing I would do with that is just pull the heads off and have somebody check them out I'm not I can't I can't take them down or nothing I, I don't have any experience with with that valve jobs or and all that but even though I messed around with that that 302 a little bit, it um, I never even tested it out. I, I need somebody to help me out finish that one. But so I'll probably uh, 
I'm thinking the TPS, which we unplugged it, and it it made a difference, so it's probably working. Throttle position. And if that's it, then uh, the only other thing it could be would be uh, uh, my fuel pump maybe has gone out. This ain't, this this was it was working fine so yeah. we don't know i i guess the the gas is probably okay because a, a lot of people said uh, that the this ethanol blend fuel is uh that it actually lasts it lasts lasts longer with the ethanol than the than the other gas so it's not gonna necessarily be get be the gas problem but the, the fuel pump could could be acting up or the vent the vent in the in the tank is another thing I could check maybe it's got trash and it can't return so therefore there's no there's no uh, pressure and this right here is is the actual this little port right here this to check your uh, your fuel rail pressure but I've never never thought to try to rent that gauge and, and check that out and for fuel injection it's got to be up around 70 psi or 62 i think these are 60 pound injectors so the fuel pressure coming on that line has got to be that minimal so it's probably up around 65 or more and then uh See that? Other than that, I'll probably have to be uh, looking into the intake in the carburetor. That's thousands of dollars. It's thousands of dollars to rebuild the engine to find out it was the computer or something like that. So we'll see what we see. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you got any suggestions, leave them in the comments. All right, go attack today. Thanks.